All right, great. Uh, next up we have Corey Quinn. He's kind of a jerk. Well, he's not wrong. So normally in these talks, I get up here and I make fun of big, successful multinational companies like Google or Netflix. So I asked Twitter, if I make fun of United Airlines, am I punching down? And the response was, yes, but they really deserve it. So I do a lot of things. I write a weekly newsletter that makes fun of AWS. You might pick up a theme here. I have a podcast. I wind up doing a fair bit of work for companies here and there. But my day job is as a consultant, and I solve one problem. I fix the horrifying AWS bill, which means I fly a lot. If you fly on United enough, namely 10 million miles, they will name a plane after you. I am not kidding. I'm not there yet. Anyone here ever bought in-flight Wi-Fi? So I noticed this a month or two ago. So I log in to spend way too much money to get way too little internet that goes to space. I put in my uh, username, I put in my password. Things are great. This is a fairly typical approach. And then once I've logged in, it saved my credit card data, and then it hits me with a CAPTCHA. <laughs> well, you have all the information. Are you sure you're not a robot? You might be one. And this got me thinking that maybe this was, everything was terrible. And sure enough, I started doing some research. And yes, everything United does is terrible. They've had a lot of problems in the headlines. They have challenges with every aspect of anything that's customer facing. And when they try and fix things, it doesn't always make it better. I get it, they deal with the general public, by which I mean jerks like me. However, this doesn't solve the problem of prescription strength, pet service, or other things that need to be taken care of in this context. So I went digging a little further, and sure enough, they've had problems with data breaches in the past. In 2014 and 15, there were a number of reported incidents that made me raise an eyebrow, and they did respond to these things reasonably well. They instituted a whole bunch of sweeping security changes. But other people started calling out what these changes looked like. When you have places like the New York Times, Washington Post, Krebs and Security, TechCrunch, all saying your new approach is terrible, well, maybe there's a problem. We've all seen the security questions that you drop down and you pick the question. They do the same thing with the answers. I'm not kidding. Your favorite sport, it turns out, they do not want you to pick MMA. Trust me on that one. So I went into why this was in their frequently asked questions section, and they said they did some research. And keyloggers are a major security concern. I'm wondering if they just checked in their own security department, because I don't see those very often in the real world. I generally tend to find myself in a world where maybe that keylogger could also intercept, I don't know, screen captures? And then it's worse, because they also have the first five characters of your password that you just speak into the phone. That says nothing good about security. And some poor jerk had to put, fill this actual question out. One of your answers for a p favorite pizza topping is mashed potatoes. Is that really a pizza topping? Yes, it is. They lie. No, it's not. I can have a debate with you about pineapple, but mashed potato is right out. Now, this is better than it used to be. It used to have a four-digit pin to log in. This was reasonable, I guess, at the time. Mine was one, two, three, four. Why? Because I'm an idiot, and I want to have the same thing as on my luggage. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but then in 2010, I got married. True story. And when I did, my wife and I both changed our last names. And that was a bit of a challenge with some companies. Some were better than others. My bank and my insurance company were disturbingly lax about it. Oh, you changed your last name? Cool, we've got that recorded. Do, do, do you want paperwork on that? Nah, we trust you, it's fine. United want me, want me not only send the marriage certificate, fine, but also a letter explaining the change. There's a code of conduct. I can't tell you what was in that letter. They changed the name. The takeaway here is that if you're debating doing something from a security point of view, reach out to cynical, sarcastic people and ask how desperately they're going to make fun of you for it. And if they start teasing you, go in a different direction. This talk has been made possible in part by United Airlines, voted Reader's Choice for Beat the Crap Out of Me magazine. <laughs> I hope they can take a joke, because if not, I'm going to have to take a punch. This is also made possible by Reactive Ops, a company that I advise. They solve the world's problems by pouring Kubernetes on them. They are hiring, and they pay Bay Area salaries for fully remote jobs. Have a chat with them. Best part about them, 
They ask me before doing ridiculous things, and I'm already writing the talk. If you've enjoyed this talk, I'm giving another one tomorrow. Uh, terrible ideas in Git, similar to the Git tips you got earlier, only awful. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Corey.